Good evening from Alton, where 20 years ago tonight, September 21st, 1989, the worst school bus crash in Texas history took 21 young lives much too soon. This is where it happened, Five Mile Line and Bryan Road in the Alton area. And there's a memorial here now set up for all of those young children who died that day. You can see the crosses here on this fence. On each of those crosses is one name for the 21 students who passed away. Tonight, in our special report, we're going to examine this bus crash by talking to the people who were touched most closely by it. And we're going to find out how they're doing tonight, 20 years later. We want to take a live look right now at the Caliche pit. You can see it's actually right behind the fence here, about 40 feet down. That's where the bus went. It went over the edge, went underwater, trapping many of those students inside. We spoke to survivors who were on the bus that day. Let's take a look back. September 21st, 1989. I remember exactly everything that happened that day, like if it was just yesterday. Jesus Cuellar was one of 81 junior high and high school students riding bus number six that Thursday morning. This is him the day of the crash. Just after 7.30, a Dr. Pepper truck ran a stop sign at Bryan Road and Five Mile Line, knocking the bus down into a caliche pit. I remember the, 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 the sound where, where they collided. And then I re after that, I remember hearing all the, all the yelling, all the screaming. In seconds, the bus was on its side, underwater. It filled up fast. Uh, it's very filthy, very dirty water. There's, you, you can't see nothing. You start looking for, for, for a way to escape. Guayab reached up, found an open window, and pulled himself out. He also rescued several others. That's so why I started putting my hands in through the windows, and that's when I started, you know, feeling people. Inside the bus, Cynthia Cantu del Bosque was trapped. She blacked out after the crash and woke up underwater. She thinks she was seconds away from drowning. I prayed. Um, I, I said what I thought was going to be my last prayer to God. I thanked him, and, uh, and I said I was ready to go. At that very moment, it was a miracle. Another student pulled her out by her hair. She swam to safety. It, it's as if it happened yesterday. It, the, the memory is very, very vivid in my mind. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me clean off. Ciro Ochoa was on the mission school board in 1989. He arrived minutes after the crash. When we actually had to tackle mothers and parents who wanted to dive in. At that time we had no idea how many kids we had lost. One by one, dead children were pulled from the bus, put on a boat, and brought to shore. Their bodies laid out on the grass. They would put a blue tarp, and it just kept mounting and mounting. Ochoa had a list of victims. He had to tell parents who'd lived and who died. I don't think I'll ever have anything harder to do. When that was over, I went to my office, and I think I cried for an hour. Eighteen died the first day. Three others went slowly. Soon, it was 19, then 20, and within a week, 21. Ten thousand people attended a memorial at Tom Landry Stadium the night after the crash. Drivers across the valley kept their headlights turned on for days to honor the victims. Cash was collected to help families pay funeral expenses. Parents buried their children. And for the first time, a funeral was held at the San Juan Shrine. It was a very, very tough time. One week later, Mission held a football game. One balloon was released in honor of each victim. All those balloons all let out at a different time as I read their name. Gathered at midfield. Left together. That was God's way of saying they're okay. I'm taking care of In sorrow, a symbol of hope.
Then came the lawyers, the lawsuits, and all that money. Families who literally, some of them didn't even have refrigerators. Well, they became multimillionaires almost overnight. And some say that money brought trouble to the city of Alton. Coming up a little bit later, we're going to examine that part of the story. But right now, I want to show you once again live this memorial here at Bryan Road and Five Mile Line. And people have been coming here all day. Uh, we've actually had people here right now this evening taking photos, coming up and paying their respects. Now, earlier we met Roy and Hortensia Garcia. Roy says he came to the site shortly after the crash, and he actually saw the bus being pulled from the water 20 years ago. He wanted to take his wife here to show her where it happened, and he held back tears as he talked about the tragedy. Very sad. Very sad because I have children, too, and I had uh, some kids in, in school at that time. And... Uh, to see those uh, parents. The city of Alton now has a playground on the site. Uh, and also the water in the Caliche pit, if you notice from the video, is shallower now. One witness actually told us that some of the children's backpacks were visible in that water as recently as a few years ago, but we did not see them today. Now, earlier today, this morning, the Mission School District held a moment of silence in honor of the 21 young people who died on September 21st, 1989. Channel 5, Stephanie Stone was there. They only know what they've been told. These students, still young, some of them the same age as the bus crash victims. They weren't there, but they were just as emotional, just as thoughtful as if it had been their classmates. Those who remember the crash remember every detail about that day. Sylvia Garcia, principal at Alton Memorial, was a teacher who had just launched her career. Our principal came over the intercom at the, and uh, just made an announcement, and he asked us to turn on the radio. He asked us to turn on the Channel One TV monitors just to keep up uh, with the news. Garcia went on to say she was horrified that day, but her career took her here to the school named after the victims she once prayed over. Her students created a butterfly garden for the 21 who died 20 years ago. The butterfly is a symbol of the souls of all the students that, that passed away. One of the paramedics who saved the survivors sat in on the ceremony. Luis Guerrero didn't recognize this woman who lived to talk quietly about that day. The students gave her their butterflies, reminded her of the classmates who never grew up. They saw the pictures, they saw the mural and saw how the district has taken their children's names and gave them faces in history. That was Stephanie Stone reporting from Alton Memorial Middle School, which was named after the 21 children who died. Now, the Dr. Pepper truck driver who actually caused this whole crash, his name is Ruben Perez, a very familiar name to many people who've been following this story here in the Valley. Now, Perez initially claimed that the truck he was driving had bad brakes, but an NTSB investigation showed the brakes on his truck worked just fine. Criminal charges were brought against him in Hidalgo County for the deaths of those 21 children. His defense lawyers argued he was never properly trained by Coca-Cola to operate the truck. It's an argument that won the case. Here's what Perez had to say to Channel 5 when he was found innocent of 21 counts of criminally negligent homicide almost four years after the accident. That I'm not the killer. I'm no in drug addict, no alcoholic. A lot of people pain on that. It hurts. This man didn't do anything wrong. Pettis' lawyers later sued the owners of the truck, Valley Coca-Cola, and they settled for an undisclosed amount. We tried asking Coca-Cola about the changes they've made since the accident, but they would not comment. A spokesman said, quote, this was a very unfortunate accident. Our deepest sympathies go out to the victims' families. We feel the pain like they do. Channel 5 News looked for Ruben Perez at his last known address today, and we were told he no longer lives there. Coming up next on this special edition of Channel 5 News at 1030, we're going to talk live with four men who risked, risked their lives that day to save the children who were in that bus. We'll talk to them next. And later, the lawyers, the lawsuits, and the money, and the trouble it brought to the city of Alton. Stay with us.